The anime started with, a common man opens his eyes, but he looks to be in great agony as tears fall from his eyes. He looks around to see people jeering and laughing at him. A prince decides to give him a parting gift before he takes his life. He asks the commoner to strike out with his magic and the man desperately tries to attack the prince. He raises his arms to shoot a mighty flame at the prince, but he can only manage a weak flame that hardly causes damage to the prince. Everyone makes fun of his flimsy magic, and the prince can't believe there's a commoner that's so weak, he's disappointed that was all a commoner could manage. He recounts the words of a great sage called William Bordeaux, who said the most important things for a mage are lineage, talent and intelligence, but he tells the commoner not to get the wrong idea, because diligence is a broader prerequisite and no amount of it can make up for a lack of talent. He begins preparing his attack as he tells the commoner that magic will never smile upon someone as insignificant as him. He releases his flame magic on the commoner, who is immediately consumed by them. He screams in agony as the flames burn into ashes and then he immediately begins to smile at the magnificence of a royalty's magic. He realizes the power behind the magic a noble wields, and he can't help but admire its beauty from his magical perspective. He wishes he learned more about magic and mastered it while he was alive. With his last breath, he prays for another chance to experience the thrill of such magic. He suddenly wakes up and he sees himself surrounded by maids holding toys, he wonders who they are and where he is. He thinks they are giant enemies, and he decides to protect himself. He tries to cast a fire spell to defend himself, but he realizes his hands are quite tiny. He accidentally casts a fire spell, which bursts through the roof of the castle as fireworks go off, marking his birth. A town cries runs through the kingdom, announcing the birth of the seventh prince of the Saloon Kingdom while sharing posters. Everyone in the village is happy to witness such a great day. Meanwhile, the maids of the castle are mind blown by the disaster caused by the newborn baby. The baby smiles cheekily, proud of his handwork in the destruction of the castle. Some years later, the people in the kingdom go about their normal activities, while some maids search for the prince in the castle. They search a portion of the castle and can't find him, so they decide to move their search to another portion of the castle. The prince comes out of hiding after they leave, and he's about to sneak away from the castle when he's greeted by two men. Prince Lloyd stops in his tracks and he shushes the man so the maids don't hear them calling his name. He tells the man to deny seeing him and the man agrees to keep his secret. He asks Lloyd if he'll like to tag along with them as they go to hunt, but Lloyd leaves him talking to himself. When the man realizes that Lloyd is trying to sneak away, he calls out to him, but Lloyd doesn't answer. The man is disappointed that the prince has run off again, but his friend informs him that Lloyd is the seventh prince, which makes him out of contention for the crown. He doesn't understand why the man is going through so much effort to gain his favor. The man reminds his friend that the prince was able to speak shortly after his birth, read spell books instead of children's picture books, and also refused breast milk like any gentleman would. He tells his friend he thinks the prince is a reincarnation of the great sage William Bordeaux. His friend tells him it's ridiculous to think the prince is a reincarnation of the great sage. The prince runs down the steps in the castle and he realizes the man is right about him being a reincarnation. He remembers he was a commoner in his past life, but he doesn't know why his memories are still intact. As the maids look for him in the castle, he wonders why he was reborn as someone privileged to be the seventh son of a royal family. Although he was born as royalty, he doesn't plan to follow their ambitions of glory. He decides to stick to his ambitions from his previous life and find out how much awesome magic can be discovered in the palace. He enters the royal library and he's excited to parse through all the magical books lining the shelves. He's amazed by the library's collection because it surpassed that of the Magic Academy in his previous life. He takes a book off the shelf and opens it up, but someone immediately appears behind him. Silpha takes the book from his hands, pressed to find him after he ran away from the maids. They engage in swordplay and Lloyd is able to hold his own against her for a while, but she eventually pushes him back. He tells her he doesn't have a shot at the throne since he's the seventh, and he doesn't need sword instructions. Silpha tells him there's more to life than succession to the throne. She reminds him that he has to be familiar with handling a sword as a member of the royal family. It was her purpose in life to make him adept with the sword after she was placed in charge of his education three years ago, Lloyd realizes that Silpha won't let him stop training unless he puts up a good show. They decide to resume their sword practice and Silpha realizes that Lloyd was getting stronger with each passing day. Lloyd wasn't bothered by her compliment because he knew she was holding back. He was also secretly using control type magic to trace Silpha's movements, so she was battling a mirror image of herself. He was basically cheating so he could get out of practice and go back to his books. They continue sparring but Silpha still gets the best out of him. 
Lloyd realizes that those Silphas still surpassed him in arm strength, stamina, and height. Though he could copy her techniques, he was still at a disadvantage against her, which would make him lose. He decides to experiment, cheating to compensate for his disadvantages against her. He uses magic to increase his sword length and his physical strength. He also uses levitation to make up for the height difference. He re-engaged Silpha and this time he's able to keep up with her. He's confident he'll be able to win with his magic enhancements. They continue their sword practice but Lloyd decides to use his trump card to make an unexpected move. He releases his trace magic, which mirrors Silpha's movements, and he tries to strike her from behind. Silpha looks surprised and Lloyd is happy he'll be able to get back to his book, but Sophia blocks his attack. She wonders if he was cheating, which catches him by surprise, and she's able to knock his sword out of his hands. She's surprised he thought she wouldn't notice his cheating schemes. She tells him he's so talented for trying to make up for his disadvantages, she's surprised he was able to use two spells at once, which most court magicians can't even manage. She tells him not to rush his growth, but to grow at his own pace. Lloyd realizes she didn't notice his physical enhancement and his control spells because he was actually using four spells at once, he decides to keep this information from her so she doesn't suss him out. Silpha takes him to the maid bath but Lloyd protests telling her he can bathe himself, Silpha doesn't want to let him out of her sight because she'll only find him under a pile of books. Lloyd is disappointed he doesn't get to read his book, but the other maids tell him the library demon will gobble him up if he remains stubborn, Lloyd is surprised there's a library with a forbidden demon. The maids recount the tale of the demon named Grimoire, who also destroyed the kingdom a long time ago. It took several stages to seal the demon away in a book. Silpha thinks the story is a fairy tale because she can't believe there's a book in the castle's underground library where the monster is sealed. Silpha doesn't think Lloyd will be scared by such a tale, but she's surprised to see him trembling. The maids offer to sleep with him through the night, but Silpha tells them she's the only one that can perform that role. An argument ensues between the maids, and Lloyd uses that opportunity to sneak away. The idea of a forbidden underground library in the castle makes his eyes sparkle with anticipation. Lloyd goes underground, and he uses a concealment spell to get through the guards guarding the entrance. The guards argue about the authenticity of the tale behind the library, as Lloyd sneaks past them. They're convinced no one will be able to sneak past them and break the seal cast by the ten most powerful mages the kingdom has ever seen. Lloyd arrives at the barrier, and he breaks the seal easily. He enters into the library, and he can't believe he never knew such an exciting section existed underground. He moves through the library, checking out the books, and he reminds himself to put up the barrier when he's leaving. He settles down with a book when another book suddenly starts levitating, which surprises Lloyd. A demon emerges from the book and he tells Lloyd he's impressed he was able to break the seal. Lloyd wonders who the demon is, and the demon introduces himself as Grimoire, and Lloyd figures out that he's the demon of the forbidden book. Lloyd introduces himself to Grimoire and Grimoire tries to convince Lloyd to free him. He tells Lloyd his seal is already degraded and he'll eventually be free. He offers to give Lloyd as much gold as he wants if he frees him, but Lloyd isn't impressed with the demon's creation magic. He's disappointed Grimoire just molded some dust into gold and he crushes the gold back into dust easily, which surprises Grimoire. Lloyd tells him he plans to replace his seal because he doesn't want a demon to destroy his plans of learning the magic of the kingdom. Grimoire tries to convince him that he has no beef with the citizens because the sages who sealed are long gone, but Lloyd doesn't believe him. Grimoire becomes desperate and he offers to teach Lloyd some ancient magic which has been lost to time. This piques Lloyd's interest, and Grimoire tells him he will teach him because he can see he has a lot of magic talent. Lloyd remembers the words of the prince who said magic would never smile on him because he's a commoner. He's now convinced he has a body more privileged in magic than a mere commoner. He decides to release the demon seal, and the demon can't believe his luck. Lloyd anticipates the teachings of the demon, and the demon decides to keep his word. He immediately strikes Lloyd with an ancient flame and he decides to move on with his escape, thinking he has taken Lloyd down. He's surprised to see Lloyd safe and sound because he uses a barrier to protect himself. Lloyd is intrigued by the spell cast by the demon, and he asks the demon to show him more. The demon is pissed by this, and he hits Lloyd with more powerful ancient magic spells, but none of them can penetrate through Lloyd's barrier. The demon is baffled by this and he wonders what Lloyd's barrier is made of. Lloyd is so fascinated by the magic that he decides to try it for himself. He takes the remnants on his barrier and he holds it on finger so he can observe its composition. He excitedly awaits what more Grimoire can offer when suddenly Grimoire grows a second mouth and starts chanting. 
Lloyd notices his double incantation to release a devastating ancient spell. Lloyd analyzes the spell from within his barrier, but Grimoire can't believe Lloyd is still alive, after being on the receiving end of his most powerful spell. Grimoire decides to put his tail between his legs and run for his life, but he's stopped by a barrier. Lloyd informs him that he put up a barrier, but Grimoire is hurt that Lloyd thought he was trying to run away. He tells Grimoire he just put up the barriers as a preventive measure. Grimoire had had enough with Lloyd, so he decides to finish him off, but Lloyd tells him he already knows his spell. Lloyd decides to test Grimoire's defensive magic, and he casts a huge spell, Grimoire can't believe Lloyd has such a huge mana reservoir. He tries to dodge the fire spell, but he's inevitably burnt to a crisp. Lloyd wonders why Grimoire wasn't able to dodge his attack and Grimoire can't believe he's so arrogant. Lloyd decides to repair the damage to the library and Grimoire is dumbfounded because he was able to restore the room so perfectly, he decides to treat Lloyd with respect since he's so amazing. Lloyd knows the demons can't be taken out with magic, so he decides to test Grimoire's limits, but Grimoire moves away from him with dread. He decides to surrender himself and pledge his services to Lloyd. He asks to serve as Lloyd's familiar, and Lloyd immediately agrees, but Grimoire feels like Lloyd sees him as a lab rat. Lloyd tells him he stands out too much, and he asks him to transform into something smaller. Grimoire transforms into a little cute demon with the aim of buttering Lloyd up, so he can take him down unawares. Lloyd invites him to jump into his coat and Grimoire can't believe Lloyd is so stupid that he'll let him get intimate. He decides to use the opportunity to attach himself to Lloyd and take over his body, but as soon as he touches Lloyd, he's surprised by how dense Lloyd's mana is. He decides to be obedient to Lloyd because he can't see himself taking control of him. Lloyd uses the opportunity to read all the books in the Forbidden Library. The story continues, we see the second Prince Albert gets dressed for the day and he proceeds to the library with the servants prostrating to him. Lloyd is reading some books in the library with Grimoire keeping him company when Albert arrives at the door. Grimoire alerts Lloyd of Albert's presence as he opens the door and Lloyd tells him to hide. Albert walks into the room and Lloyd is so excited to see him that he raises his head too fast, which makes the book on his head fly into Albert's hand. Lloyd sits and watches enthusiastically as Alberts prepares to practice at the testing range. He uses his fire magic to take down a target to the amazement of the spectators. Lloyd applauds his effort, while Grimoire can't believe he gets to witness the second prince of the kingdom in action. Lloyd informs him that Albert is so smart and physically capable that people refer to him as the next potential king. This gives him authority to access various facilities in the castle, and Lloyd is always happy when Albert invites him to tag along because that's the only time he's allowed to use his magic. Lloyd gets off the bench and Albert informs him that it's his turn to have a go at the practice range. Lloyd walks over to the line, but he realizes that he shouldn't look so impressive, so people won't think he's in contention for the throne. All he wants to do is study magic without drawing anyone's attention to him. He decides to make his fireball graze all the targets instead of hitting them squarely with Grimoire tells him people will notice that it is harder to pull off. Lloyd decides to stick to his idea, and he makes his fireballs graze the targets. Everyone applauds his effort, but one of them teases him for only being able to graze the target. Grimoire is pissed by this because he knows it's harder to make the fireballs graze the target. Meanwhile, Lloyd is accessing the pros and cons of his technique, and Grimoire realizes that he's addicted to magic knowledge. Albert decides to take a break and he leaves Lloyd at the practice range to let loose. The servants follow Albert, which makes Lloyd delighted to have the whole gallery to himself. He decides to try out so many ideas that he has been holding in. Grimoire wonders what he'll try, and Lloyd tells him he's going to try out his double incantation magic. Grimoire tries to deter him because only demons can do the double incantation trick since they have two mouths. Lloyd decides to absorb Grimoire into his hand, but he's surprised it worked. Grimoire doesn't feel comfortable being assimilated into Lloyd's body. Lloyd decides to try and sync up with him so they can cast an advanced fire spell. Lloyd wonders if Grimoire can cast it, and Grimoire reminds him that advanced spells are child's play to him because he's a demon. Lloyd realizes he'll be able to cast it and they begin casting it together. They barely say the full incantation before Grimoire gets sick. Lloyd wonders what's wrong with him, and Grimoire tells him he should be the one questioning his actions. He wonders what incantation Lloyd is saying, and Lloyd tells him it was a spell stack. Spell stacking is a way of abbreviating spells that require incantations to reduce their cast time. He explains to Grimoire that he was trying to cast 100 spells at once using that methodology. Grimoire is surprised by this because spell stacking doesn't work that way. He reminds Lloyd that a single spell stack can only comprise a maximum of 3 spells at once. 
Lloyd is bummed out because it would take an eternity to cast the incantation of the spell he wants. Lloyd decides to take over Grimoire's mouth on his palm, but he also tries out his own to make sure he can talk through both at the same time. Grimoire wonders if he's about to try out two advanced spell incantations at the same time but Lloyd shuts him up because he needs his mouth. He begins casting the incantation, while Grimoire wonders how he's able to cast two different advanced spells at the same time. He realizes that Lloyd is folding two forms of magic, and he's impressed by Lloyd's mana reserves. Grimoire keeps observing Lloyd as he does the double incantation, but he realizes the spell would be too powerful to point at anything, let alone a target. Lloyd finishes casting the incantation and a powerful beam is cast upwards. The beam is so powerful that it catches the attention of everyone in the kingdom. Prince Albert's attendants wonder why he gives Lloyd so much attention and Albert realizes they don't have an eye for talent. He tells them that Lloyd made his fireball graze all the targets in the same way intentionally, which makes him a magic prodigy. He tells them Lloyd could become a great sage one day, which will make him a vital asset to his future. The attendants aren't surprised, he wants a great sage in his service since he could be the king in the future. Albert tells them he just wants to get along with his little brother. He tells them his brother should have taken down the targets in the training room by now, but his attendant tells him he's over-exaggerating. He looks out the window and he sees the sky is dark, he wonders why the sun is already setting at noon. Meanwhile, Grimoire is shaking in his books, in their case his hands, as he looks at the result of Lloyd's spell. He's surprised his spell blew a hole in the sky to change it from noon to night. Lloyd marvels in his work before he realizes what he has done. He hastily dispels his spell so the sky can return to normal. Grimoire wonders what Lloyd is made of, while Lloyd is glad he was able to revert his spell. The next day, Grimoire picks up the daily papers and he reads the story about the blast in the sky made by Lloyd. He informs Lloyd about the story but another story catches his eyes. He tells Grimoire about the story of a ranked adventuring company's clearing difficult dungeons and collecting treasures. He's enchanted by the treasure the adventurers get, and he decides to head out to a dungeon. He begins walking like a hypnotized zombie hold Grimoire does his best to stop him to no avail. Grimoire tells him everyone in the castle will freak out if he goes missing, but Lloyd tells him there's nothing a little magic can't solve. He shows Grimoire an acorn and he uses a plant class smell to form a replica of himself. Grimoire is impressed by this but Lloyd decides to flex more and show Grimoire how sophisticated the replica is. Grimoire is convinced Lloyd will be able to slip out of the castle since he has such a good replica. Lloyd tells him his issue with using the replica is fooling Silpha, he remembers when she told him he grew by 0.7 millimeters, which surprised him. Grimoire is also surprised by how attentive she is, and Lloyd tells him he won't be able to fool her with a replica that dances like a dummy. He decides to make Grimoire inhabit the replica while he leaves the castle. He successfully escapes the castle and he decides to play a call across to Grimoire. For some reason, his magical call requires a phone signal but let's not talk about that. He asks Grimoire how things are looking on his end, and Grimoire tells him he's doing his best to represent him. The maids stare at Lloyd through the door, surprised that he's paying attention to his looks for the first time. Grimoire realizes that Lloyd's idea to transfer his consciousness to his replica was ingenious. Lloyd tells him to watch out for Silpha while doing his best impression of him. Grimoire checks out the replica he's inhabiting, and he's surprised that it has mana circulation. He immediately gets an idea and he realizes that he can do whatever he wants now that Lloyd is out of the picture. He smiles like a maniac as he thinks about all the things he can do. Lloyd suddenly calls out to him and tells him he's counting on him to do his best. Grimoire is so touched by this that he's too stunned to speak. Lloyd calls out to him again, and Grimoire tells him that he'll do his best till he gets back. Lloyd keeps flying, but he looks around and he stops. Though he was able to leave the castle without trouble, he realizes that he has no idea where to find a dungeon. He stays levitating, trying to think about his next move, when he suddenly notices some movement on the ground. A girl is being chased by some orcs, and Grimoire informs him that someone is in danger. The girl suddenly stops, and she turns around to face the orcs. She takes them down easily under seconds, and Lloyd realizes she's a martial artist from her battle style. He notices her breathing technique and he's impressed by it. The girl stands triumphantly over the orcs and she tells them to try their luck again and another 100 years. Lloyd remembers a book that talked about people in foreign countries who channel their inner energy called Kai to create incredible techniques. The girl notices Lloyd hiding from her and she calls out to him. Lloyd is surprised she was able to notice him from such a far distance, but he decides to meet her and ask her about her techniques and dungeons. 
Grimoire tells him that the girl may recognize him as the seventh prince if he goes out to meet her. Since the girl doesn't get a response from Lloyd, she decides to take him as her enemy. She rushes at him to attack him, but Lloyd hastily changes his appearance. She comes up to Lloyd and he introduces himself as Robert, a rookie adventurer. He created an illusion from a mixture of his image and his brother's image to create an authentic appearance. The girl introduces herself to him as Tao, a rank B adventurer and a martial artist. Lloyd wonders if she suspects his disguise, but Grimoire tells him the illusion is perfect. Meanwhile, Tao is falling head over heels for Robert because no male has paid her any attention since she left her dojo. She was glad she finally found someone interesting, and she decided to make Lloyd her boyfriend, even if hell has to freeze over. Lloyd tells her he wanted them to explore a dungeon together, but if she doesn't feel like it, he'll find someone else. She immediately tells him they can explore a dungeon together, and they head over to a dungeon entrance immediately. They enter the dungeon and Tal takes down several monsters trying to impress Lloyd, but he's more interested in the glowing rocks scattered all over the cave floor. Tal must have feel bad that a male was more interested in smooth rocks than he was in her. They move deeper into the cave, and Lloyd wonders why Tal is adventuring alone, and she tells him she hasn't found suitable comrades yet. They take a break inside the dungeon to prepare some refreshments, and Lloyd asks her about her Kai technique. Tao is surprised he knows about Kai, since not many people know about the technique on his continent. He tells her that Kai is just like mana for sorcerers, and he also tells her he noticed her breathing technique. She tells him that the breathing technique is fundamental to Kai mastery, which allows a human to gain explosive power. She tells him that it takes time to hone breathing techniques, but she looks at him, surprised to see that he's practicing the breathing technique. He suddenly chokes, and Tao tells him he can't practice the breathing techniques carelessly because he could hurt himself. Lloyd noticed that he felt an energy force different from his mana, and he realizes he can use the energy to increase his magic power. Tao decides to teach him more about the Kai technique, and he thanks her for the free tutelage. Her heart suddenly skips a beat, but she sternly tells Lloyd to keep up his breathing technique to hide her reaction. Grimoire can't believe that Lloyd cares about nothing other than learning magic. He's about to have some desert when Silpha suddenly shows up behind him, which surprises him. Tao demonstrates a Kai Blast to Lloyd as she takes down a Grey Wolf, which she thinks is the boss of the dungeon. She tells him they can now open the treasure chest of the dungeon, but she warns him that the treasure may be underdeveloped because the dungeon is not high level. Lloyd is intrigued by the system of the dungeon and Tao notices this. They approach the treasure chest, and Town notices that Lloyd has almost fully mastered the breathing technique. She's glad she got herself a keeper, and she's sure even her strict grandpa would approve of Lloyd. She decides to do her best to make sure that Lloyd remains by her side, but Lloyd is more interested in the opening of the treasure chest than her delusive thoughts. Tao opens the treasure chest and she's almost sliced in half by an energy blade, but Lloyd saves her as the blade cuts through the dungeon floor where she was standing a moment before. A lich rises up menacingly from beneath the treasure chest, which surprises Tao, but Lloyd is hyped to face a new boss as his eyes glow with anticipation. That brings the episode to an end. Thanks for watching. Want next episode subscribe the channel and turn on notification bell.